Okay, hello everyone, and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Resistance. The uh, story is, um, well, it's it takes place in the next generation, not the original series or the reboot, you know. Uh, shortly after, the, or sometime after, the events of uh, Star Trek Nemesis. And, um, <clears throat> and um, you know, it's a uh, start, it's a... Um, you know, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, Picard is like facing off and the crew are facing off against the Borg again. Except this time, like, the number one is, uh, you know, is, um, uh, Commander Guy, whose name I forgot, has, uh, left and, uh, along with him that, uh, psychic, uh, not Beverly, um, um, uh, Donna Troy. Donna Troy in uh, number one, as I know him as, um, has of course, have, they've gotten married and they're gone. And like Picard wants uh, Commander Worf to be the uh, next first officer of the Enterprise, the next number one. And um, they have uh, Vulcan as their new ship's counselor and uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, a couple of, th and there's also this, um, subplot revolving around like these two red shirts that die they named uh some leo leonardo Batil batagliers and uh sarah nave you know it's this whole uh, tragic thing like you know like on the, like on the one hand like it feels like padding but on the other hand it's like um <clears throat> it's actually like this really gripping like tragic thing that it really like makes you feel like it feel for these guy for these people, you know, like um, <clears throat> like uh, you know, um, you know, actually making you like get to really get like really bummed out when you see uh, the red because like it actually kind of happens from like their perspective, their death, and like it's just such a huge bummer and crushes and stuff like that and it kind of like feels a little out of place next to like the rest of the stuff which kind of feels like a <clears throat> more or less like a typical like TNG episode or maybe not typical but you know you know what I mean like a, just a, just like you know um, uh, I'll just I'll explain like um, after the events of like ne of the nemesis you know, and after the events of Voyager, where, um, <clears throat> you know, the Borg have been thoroughly just screwed the crap out of them by the Voyager crew when they're getting home. Yeah, it sounds contrived and stupid, but that's how it happened. And now the, the Borg are, um, <clears throat> at least the Borg in the Alpha Quadrant have, uh, you know, sort of began rebuilding themselves up. Uh, they're constructing a new Borg queen, <clears throat> and um, and they're also building like this huge ship. Like, and they're they're not gonna like assimilate the Alpha Quadrant. They're just gonna just wreck house everywhere, just destroy everything. Like, you know, no assimilation, just death, 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 death. <clears throat> you know, plus they attack immediately. You know, and um, yeah. And like Borg, and like Picard through his like Borg uh, telepathic link or whatever, you know, you know, senses them, you know, <clears throat> and they go to the, you know, the the new ship that they're building, which is like this big super cube. It's basically the Death Star, and they, uh, you know, they they have to like, you know, stop the Queen. <clears throat> the way they stop them is. Um, not the way I expected, but at the same time, it's it doesn't really feel like I'd go like, oh, I didn't expect that because it's like, that sounds super clever. It's just like, I didn't expect that because it sounds like super weird way. I mean, <clears throat> the plan is basically kill the queen, you know, because, you know, like, they need a queen at their head to, like, direct their, like, you know, I guess you could say being like a... Having a queen is sort of like an antithesis to like the whole collective thing, cause like, 
you know, um, <clears throat> a bunch of minds that think alike and that are like synced up and stuff so they wouldn't make a mistake or whatever. But at the same time, like, I can see how, like, they would need, like, somebody, like, direct them, like, go here, here, and so forth. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. Um, but I, th I think that, like, with, like, more and more minds, it would be, like, they'd just be getting smarter and smarter. But so far, it seems like, you know, they don't. They just, you know, they're just a mass mob and that's controlled by the queen, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, th I like. Yeah, I think it would be. I, th I thought it would be something like the Geth from Mass Effect. But yeah, any, but anyway. Um, but again, back to the main plot. You know, they're trying to destroy the Queen, and um, you know he has to like uh, become Locutus again, which I thought was kind of odd. You know, <clears throat> and uh, you know, like when I first uh, read this, I was like. I was kind of beginning to like really like it, but you know, then as I kept on reading, it just sort of seemed like goofier from like a uh, Picard somehow like reintegrating himself as Locutus, like infiltrate the Borg to uh, this um, <clears throat> admittedly, you know, well told and very tragic tale of uh, Sarah Nave and Leo Patel Patel Pateglia or whatever, you know. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, which ultimately just winds up being, like, this, uh, thing of, uh, just, uh, padding that, you know, just doesn't seem to add up to much. But, you know, overall, it's still, um, it's flawed, obviously, but it's still entertaining. <clears throat> My final rating for this is a 3 out of 5. A recommended if. And that if is, um, well, if you're a Star Trek fan. If you're a fan of Star Trek, you're going to most likely like this, maybe, I don't know. But if you're not, I probably wouldn't recommend it. You probably wouldn't be into it, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, next time we're going to be taking a look at, of all things, the official movie novelization of Interstellar. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> yes, there really is that. And um, we'll be talking about that and, and this and the movie a little bit next time. <clears throat> Until then, see you later. Have a nice day, you know, and uh, support your local libraries and uh, by, you know, going there, support them with your, like, uh, patronage money and so on and so forth, and um, oh yeah, again, have a nice day, and live long and prosper.